Well, hello and a very warm welcome. Today I'm going to talk about no demons in Ephesians, particularly looking at Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. A well-known passage. And we're going to apply to that principles of internal harmony and logic and research throughout other passages of Scripture. So, in the keys of the Kingdom Holy Bible, Ephesians 6.12 reads like this, The combat for us is not against blood and flesh, but against the prime rulers, against the forces of power, against the world rulers of this age of darkness, against the spirits of evil among the most eminent, most eminent what? Most eminent people. There's a teaching about spiritual warfare and people say, oh, I went shopping without my armour on and this kind of thing. And, um, and some groups have gone out walking around the streets and squares praying against what they call principalities of darkness as if they're exorcising the town from um, uh, inhabiting gargoyle figures hovering in the clouds and all around, creating the evil in the town. But everything goes on just the same, or getting worse. To challenge that would probably um, invite me as being labelled as an uh, unbeliever, a heretic, um, spiritually immature. But is this what the passage is about? There are other passages with lists of such eminent people, spirits. Revelation 6.15 talks about the kings of the earth and the high ranking and the military commanders and the wealthy and the mighty men. Revelation 19 talks about the flesh of kings, flesh of commanders of a thousand, flesh of the mighty men, and of those both lowly and eminent. Romans 8, 30, 8 and 39, um, neither death nor life nor messengers nor rulers nor forces of power nor height nor depth nor any other created thing can separate us from the love of God in Christ. So we have these lists elsewhere. Now the phrase in Ephesians 6, 12, world rulers. The Greek is cosmocrator, so cosmos, world. And these are rulers of the world. Well, we know their names. And this is the uh, Tower of Babel spirit. And when the Tower of Babel was being built, Elohim sent an angel down to investigate what was going on in the land and God confused their language, how we're not told. And so this Tower of Babel spirit is wanting to, humans wanting to rule the world. And this is just what we're seeing now. These passages perhaps are even more alive now than they were in the days that um, Paul and John wrote them. So. Also, in Ephesians 6, there's the phrase, spirits of evil. Um, now, sometimes in the Word of God, the word spirit, or spirits, plural, are put for person or people. There are a lot of examples, and a lot of them are footnoted in Keys of the Kingdom, Holy Bible at Ephesians, no, sorry, Hebrews 12.23. And so this is both in the Old Testament and the New Testament. Um, so we have in Numbers 16, 22 and 27, 16, the Elohim of the spirits of all flesh. So the people of all flesh. These are not um, some kind of hollow people. These are people with flesh. 1 Kings 22, 22, also at 2 Chronicles 18, a messenger came forward and he said he would be a lying spirit in the mouth of the prophets. And uh, 
we read um, in Isaiah 37, uh, I will send a spirit to him and he will hear a rumour and go back to his own land and I will cause him to fall by the sword in his own land. So this is somebody living on the earth called a spirit and he's being a messenger and he's going to fall on his sword, presumably kill himself. And that passage is also in 2 Kings 19. And the result is the king heard and he sent messengers to Hezekiah. Um, Zechariah 13, 2. Um, I will cause the prophets and the unclean spirits to pass out of the land. So unclean spirits are listed with prophets, or if you like, put in opposition to prophets. So prophets are men of the flesh, aren't they? Humans. And... Of course, the uh, context here is false prophets, the lying prophets, in Zechariah 13, 2. When the kingdom is established, there will be no liars telling false things about the word of God and about God and Christ and Christians. And he, God will cause them to pass out of the land, so that they're in the land, unclean spirits, people. Mark 3.11, <clears throat> whenever the unclean spirits saw Jesus, they fell down before him and called out, saying, You are the son of Elohim. But again, unclean spirits, these are people who saw Jesus. And they fell down before him. And they knew who he was, because the word about him was getting round. He was the son of God. So when... Certain people of unclean spirit saw him. Um, Luke 9.55, Jesus turned rebuking Jacob and John and he said, You do not know what manner of spirit you are, so what sort of people you are. Uh, Luke 10.18 and 20, Jesus said to the disciples, I saw the enemy falling like lightning from the sky. I have given you authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and all the power of the enemy. Rejoice not in this, in that the spirits are subject to you, but rejoice your names are written among the exalted. So there we have trample on serpents and scorpions. Well, these are not animals. The Bible often uses this figure of anthropomorphism using um, animal or creature names for people um, often enemies such as Jesus called Herod a fox and so here Jesus is saying even people of a oppressed or bad character are being subject to you um, because nothing will in any way harm you Jesus said and Ezekiel 2 chapter 6 uh, you son of Adam, do not be afraid of them, nor be afraid of their words, though briars and thorns are with you, and you live among scorpions. So briars, thorns, scorpions, these are evil people, enemies, humans. Matthew 3, 7, John the Baptist, seeing many Pharisees and Sadducees coming to his baptism, said to them, progeny of vipers, who warned you to flee from the coming indignation? These were people, so vipers, serpents, scorpions, the people. And then going back to Luke, the spirits are subject to you, the people. Jesus said, Matthew 23, 33, uh, to the scribes and Pharisees, fill up then the measure of your father's serpents, progeny of vipers. So, again humans. And uh, Ezekiel 16 describes them as coming from the land of Canaan and um, being their mother being Hittite, so this explains the, um, the mixed seed and why Jesus was able to say to them that they are guilty of all the blood going back to Abel. Uh, Luke 22, 52, 53 
um, Jesus said to those who came against him, senior priests and chief magistrates of the temple and elders, have you come out with swords and bandit, with swords and clubs as if against a bandit? So then he says, this is your hour and of the power of darkness. Now the darkness was the priests and magistrates of the temple and the elders. And we have the phrase in Ephesians 6, 12, this age of darkness, it's the people. And uh, you know, we might think of senior priests and chief magistrates of temples and elders. Um, 1 Peter 3, 19, Peter speaks of the spirits in captivity. So this is the captivity of unbelief and in the grave in chains in the grave, not literal chains. And so spirits, these are people. And false messengers imprisoned by their bondage in disobedience and falsehood. They're not angels or ghosts or gargoyle-like figures or something mystical. 1 Corinthians 5.5, 5, some examples from Paul. Hand such a man over to the enemy for the destruction of the flesh so that the spirit can be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. The spirit can be saved, the person. What else can it mean? 1 Corinthians 12, 10, the discerning of spirits, the discerning of people. I haven't seen anything else. I haven't been walking uh, be, and seen some kind of gargoyle figure talking. I haven't been to churches or Christian meetings where there's been somebody who's been a non-human and I have to discern the spirit. Is this an angel or um, an angel of light of God or is it an angel of darkness? Never seen them. Discerning the spirits, test the spirits, the people. 2 Corinthians 11.4 If you receive a different spirit which you did not receive from us, some messenger, Paul goes on proclaiming another Jesus and a different gospel. Um, 2 Thessalonians 2, Paul warns the Thessalonians not to be uh, quickly shaken in mind or disturbed, either through a spirit or a word or a letter. Well, words come out of human mouths and letters written by humans never seen anybody else write a letter. So there we have a list of three, a spirit, a word, a letter. So a spirit, a person. 1 Timothy 4.1, in latter times some will apostatize from the faith, adhering to deceiving spirits. Yeah, false teachers. And there are plenty of those around. And Hebrews 12.9, the father of spirits. Um, this is in a positive context, a father of believers who redeemed his people. Hebrews 12, 23, similar, but the spirits of the righteous having been perfected, the righteous people. Um, 1 John 4, 1 to 6, now this is about hearing people talking about spiritual things and discerning who they are, where they're coming from, and uh, whether they're telling the truth or talking delusions. Sometimes it's a mixture, but that in itself is bad enough. Do not believe every spirit. So do not believe everybody who comes along. One man will come along and tell you there are three gods called one God, and then another man will come along and say, no, God is one. Well, which man cited the scriptures? The one who said God is one. Um, but put the spirits to the test whether they are from God because many false prophets have gone out into the world. Uh, false prophets. These spirits are people. By this the spirit of Elohim, so a person who is from God, is recognised. Every spirit, every person who professes Jesus Christ having come in flesh is from God, Elohim. And every spirit who does not profess Jesus Christ having come in flesh is not from Elohim. So every person 
We are from Elohim. The one knowing Elohim hears us. Yeah, so we who really believe in truth, we can discern. And when somebody comes telling the truth, we know that. We recognize it. He who is not from Elohim does not hear us. By this, we recognize the spirit of the truth and the spirit of delusion. So, messengers of good or evil. Uh, Revelation 18 verse 2 speaks of demons and spirits. Babylon the Great has become a residence of demons and a prison of every unclean spirit. So, evil people live in there. And a prison of every unclean and abominable bird. Well, I say that those are people. Uh, might be wrong, but that's my opinion. Because in Isaiah 56, 8 to 12, Isaiah 11, 12, Amos 4, 1, Isaiah 2, 16, Psalm 147, verse 2, Acts 10, we have um, birds and reptiles and creatures spoken of. Isaiah 56 describes them as the outcasts of Israel. And you can look up those passages. So who are these cosmocrators? Well, again, these world rulers, I say, we know their names. And so what is the definition of demonic? Well, there's only one place to find that really, isn't there? And that is in the written word of God. And the letter of James, which should be called Jacob, that is his name. And how much nicer to call him Jacob? You know, what names of the patriarchs and um, the house of Jacob. So Jacob 3.15 Such wisdom is not coming down from above, but is earthly, natural, demonic. So that's what demonic is, something that's earthly or natural. It's not from God, people talking spiritual things that are not from God, false teachers. And Jacob 4 verse 5, Do you think that in vain the scripture speaks towards envy, yearns the spirit which is naturally resident in us? The spirit which is naturally resident in us. So the spirit, the character we're born with, yearns towards envy. So Romans 8 verse 3 yeah. I put this out right, um, says concerning sin, he condemned sin in the flesh. So we're born with sin in the flesh. So sin is naturally resident in us, and Jacob says it yearns towards envy. And it's naturally resident. And what is naturally resident in us is not the truth of the Word of God. And understanding would be demonic and so unsaved people cannot teach the word of God they can tell us factual things and in fact there is a Victorian commentary on John's gospel with footnotes and uh, that was something actually very useful uh, from a Freemason bishop um, so but they don't understand spiritual things so the weapons of combat in Ephesians chapter 6, we're told what they are. To uh, The combat for us is not against flesh and blood, blood and flesh, I think it is. Um, we're not engaged in military warfare. And then Paul lists the um, armament of military warfare but they're not um, used in physical fighting. Um, they are truth, righteousness, peace, faith, a sound mind, knowing the word, praying, watching, persevering. These are the weapons of our combat. 
And so if we think that we can get some spiritual maturity and cleansing and of ourselves and of our town by going around calling out against these ugly things that exist in the imaginations of the traditions of men, it will not get anywhere. The scriptures tell us really the battle is oft, often within. Now I love the Psalms. I read them over and over. King David struggles. And so it's knowing the word of God and praying, being with God, talking to God and to our fellow brothers and sisters, studying the word of God. These are how we mature. And if we mature spiritually, those around us will benefit and the society around us will benefit. So we pray to God and we put on the helmet of salvation and feet booted with the gospel of peace. That is, we go and tell others and in righteousness and praying Paul talks about all these things in uh, terms of combat using Roman armament and the sword of the Spirit and the Word of God. This is how we grow. But all the time we're caught up thinking that we've got to go around rebuking gargoyles. We're not going to get anywhere. Thank you very much and God bless you all.